As we progress through the assessment of our upper and lower extremities, we want to keep an eye out for bilateral symmetry. In the presence of an asymmetrical measurement in the lower extremity or the upper extremity, this could be a clue to a deep vein thrombosis. In the event that you notice asymmetry in one of the extremities, you would want to take a tape measure and measure the widest circumference of that extremity. After marking this measurement, you would want to measure the opposite extremity in the same location and compare readings. Additionally, you can assess the, for the presence of edema by applying direct pressure over the skin on the tibial bone. Apply firm pressure for approximately five seconds. Upon release, a normal finding would be immediate rebounding of the skin without indentation from your fingers. After completing the peripheral portion of the cardiovascular assessment, we are ready to move towards the central core where the heart is located. Before moving directly to the chest, we want to start by assessing the vessels in the neck. This is an important assessment because the carotid artery has a direct path to the heart and the pulsation of the carotid artery directly coincides with each contraction of the heart's ventricle. We start by palpating the carotid artery, which is located in this groove in between the trachea and the sternal, sternomastoid muscle. It is okay for the patient to be seated while palpating the carotid arteries. In a similar fashion that we assess the peripheral vessels, we also want to assess the carotid arteries bilaterally. However, while assessing the carotid arteries, you only want to palpate one at a time because palpating both can compromise blood flow to the brain. As you assess the carotid artery on both sides of the neck, you want to palpate for equal contour in each vessel. In addition, you want to feel the amplitude of the pulsation and note that it is equal bilaterally. In the event that you are assessing a middle-aged to older client with cardiac history, it would also be appropriate to use your stethoscope and also tape for the presence of a bruit within the carotid artery. A bruit is a swishing pulsation heard from turbulent blood flow that could be caused from narrowing of the vessel. To also tape for a bruit, you want to listen at three points on the neck. These points are right under the angle of the jaw, at the mid-cervical level, and at the base of the neck. A normal finding would not be to hear a turbulent pulsation. As you auscultate for the presence of a carotid bruit, it is important to direct your patient to keep their head in a neutral alignment. And before you start to listen, tell your patient to take a deep breath, exhale, and refrain from breathing while you listen. As you listen, it is important to apply only light pressure to the three previously mentioned spots. The same rule applies as one palpating the carotid and that gentle pressure avoids compressing blood flow to the brain. The other major vessel that we want to assess in the neck is the jugular vein. When assessing the jugular vein, which is located over the sternomastoid muscle, we are assessing the central venous pressure. The central venous pressure is a measurement of the blood returning through the venous system back to the heart and arterial system. While assessing the jugular vein, you want to be positioned on the right side of your patient where the veins have direct access and route to the heart. Inspecting or visualizing the jugular vein can be difficult. Therefore, you want to have your patient lying flat without pillows propping or flexing the position of the neck. As previously mentioned, if the jugular vein is visualized, which in fact it is not able to be visualized in all people, it will be in the sternal mastoid muscle of the neck. It is important to have your patient in the proper position because as the patient 
begins to elevate their torso, once they reach about 30 to 45 degree angle, it will be impossible to visualize this vein. When visualizing the jugular vein in the neck, you want to look for distension. This distension of the jugular vein could be an abnormal finding with an indication of an origin of vessel aneurysm or congestive heart failure. In addition to visualizing the jugular vein, you want to look in the sternal notch and look for a pulsation of this vein. At this point, it is time to start assessing the precordium. The precordium is the anterior chest directly overlying the heart. For the purpose of this video, clothes will be remaining on. However, in the true clinical setting, we would want direct access to the skin of this area while preserving dignity with the use of drapes. We begin our assessment of the precordium by looking for the apical pulse. The apical pulse is the pulsation generated when the left ventricle rotates against the chest wall during systole, also known as contraction. In the female patient, you may have to ask her to either lift her left breast or pre-warn her before doing so. The apical pulse is located between the fourth and fifth intercostal space, which is frequently right below the breast tissue in females. After visualizing the apical pulse, you want to palpate this pulse using the pad of one finger. As previously mentioned, the apical pulse is located between the fourth and fifth intercostal space on the left side of the body. Prior to palpating, you want to direct your patient to exhale a deep breath and hold while you feel. While feeling, you want to mark the location, frequency, rhythm, and amplitude of this pulse, similar to how you chart other pulses. In the event that you're having difficulty locating the pulse, you can assist your patient to lean halfway towards their left side. This makes it easier and the pulse more forward to feel. When assessing patients with a very thick chest wall, or patients with obesity, it may not be possible to palpate this pulse. Additionally, when assessing patients that are experiencing a high moment of anxiety or apprehension, it may be very bounding. After palpating the apical pulse, you can proceed with palpation of the precordium. Palpation of the precordium can start at the apex of the heart and move up along the stern left sternal ridge towards the base. On the contrary, it's also acceptable to start at the base of the heart and move down the left sternal side to the apex. Normal findings during palpation of the precordium would not to feel any additional pulsations. After inspecting and palpating the precordium, you want to finish your assessment by listening to the blood flow through the chambers and valves of the heart. Again, as previously mentioned, you want to clean your stethoscope before and after direct application to your client's skin. When listening to the heart sounds, you want to listen over the four valve areas. The four valve areas include the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral valve areas. These points of auscultation begin in the second intercostal space of the right side. After listening to this side, you follow a pattern of moving over to the second intercostal space, moving down to just below the sternum, and then over to that fourth and fifth intercostal space. Although the four valve areas have been the traditional landmarks for auscultating heart sounds, you do not want to limit your assessment to these four areas. After listening to these four areas, you want to go back over the precordium in a Z-like pattern. By following this Z-like pattern, you may pick up heart sounds that are not being heard over the traditional valve areas. While listening, prior to listening, you want to let your patient know that heart sounds are very delicate and gentle to hear. Therefore, they should not be alarmed if you spend a minute listening. 
While listening, you want to try to block out external noises and really focus on what you're hearing. You want to differentiate the S1 versus S2 heart sounds. The S1 is the first sound heard in the love dub pairing. It is also louder than the S2, and the S1 coincides with pulsations of the carotid heart. At this moment, I would like to thank Zira for participating in this video. This has been Cardiovascular Assessment. Thank you for watching.